Um, my question is, when it comes to mailing probate specifically, do you just mail the decedent um, or will you mail the petitioner? And the reason I ask that is because in some of the counties that I pull the probates in, I'll just get the decedent with no petitioner or executor. Yeah, so um, you should um, mail what you have that's most accurate to someone who has control over the property. It's the best way to say it, probably. So mail the decedent if that's all you have. Mail the petitioner if you have the petitioner. So when you upload your probate list, um, you're going to upload it normally as add new properties, and then you're also going to upload it in swap owners um, so that you can swap the petitioner with the um, previous owner of the property. So when you mail it, you're going to mail the petitioner. Um, and then um, as far as the um, decedents concerned with the petitioners, make sure that when you do that swap owner, um, whoever the decedent is, is in the notes. So that um, basically in the CSV document, you have the you know petitioner's name, then have mailing address, property address, and then notes. Make sure you add the decedent's name and the case number to the to to it, so you can quickly reference that. Upload that to SIF, swap owners, add new properties into the system. So you're gonna have to do it twice if you have data that has the petitioner or the regular decedent. I got it. Yeah, I think I, I think I watched that probate video too. You were using power tools and combining. Cause that's how I get it. I get the CSV file. It's like, you know, it's like petitioner one and then relationship address petition, you know, and then like air number two relationship address. And then what I do is I just combine all those fields into one label it notes. And then that's how I upload it into SEP. So as we're, you know, click yeah. to calling the, from a brief video, like, okay, this is who we're trying to talk to. Just know that in that video that I think I, uh, I think I know which one you're talking about. I don't, I don't put the petitioner's name in the, in the first and last name. Yeah. Um, I, um, I put the decedent's information there. So just, um, uh, we've, uh, since then switch, uh, switched that because we've added a few more different processes in the company to where we upload the decedent's information, uh, or the pro the petitioner's information and we swap it with the decedent. But what we do is because we're manually checking every probate in SIF, we see if the address is already in SIF, we're checking every one in SIF first, looking at if it's in SIF already, we look at the owner in SIF and see if they own multiple properties. And if they do own multiple properties, then we let's say they own three properties. One of them is the one that was on the probate. If we swap the um, the PR with the one that was on probate, now there's going to be two, there's going to be the probate and then there's going to be the decedents owns two other properties in our system. So what we do is we mark that address and then we go in and we manually update those other two properties that person owned in our account with the pro the petitioner's information. Got it. Do the owner profile, right? Yeah, no owner profile, right. So, so the reason we never did it before is because of that step right there. We always did decedents information only, never swap with petitioner because of that singular reasoning is I didn't want the owner profile to break apart. Um, but we just basically said, you know what, screw it. I'd rather get to the petitioner. And so we're going to manually check to see if they own multiple properties. And because we get roughly only 65 probates a, a month, it's a very easy thing to manage. You know, I'm going to give you some free money. I'm going to remove all excuses that you have on why you can't get started in REI SIF by actually giving you money to start at here at REI SIF. Using this coupon code, you'll get $25 to use for skip tracing, direct mail, and whatever else you want. And I'm gonna go even further and let you know that when you sign up, if you go ahead and message support, you might even be able to get yourself a little bit of data in there as well. But just know that it's way more data than you would need in order to get your first deal, your second deal, or even just get a few more deals inside your business, especially when it's free. Use this coupon code, go sign up for a trial, and continue watching our content and learn more about how to be awesome at sales and marketing in real estate.